dose, yeah. Micro dose, micro dose, micro dose, dose, dose. Micro dose, micro dose, dose, dose. Micro dose, micro dose, dose, What's good, y'all? Kush Hayes here. No, your ears are not deceiving you. This is, I'm now sounding different. Thanks for listening to the last three weeks. We had the folks from the Overlook Hour on the show, and the episode went so long, and because things with work got so complicated, it ended up being a three-part episode. And I tried to make them all sound as different as they could, intros and outros, but if you knew, you knew. And, uh, you know, we're, we're not trying to hide anything. We had a very long episode. I made the best uh, I could out of it. I hope you had a good time listening to it as we had recording with it. But brand new episode today, James Marshall, from where nobody knows your name. Season 8 is on their radar right now. James, what's good, man? Uh, Local by choice, international by nature. How you doing? I'm doing all right, Kush. Yeah, yeah. we started Season 8. Three episodes have aired thus far. It's a good season. Yeah. Recorded the backlog I, of it. So there's a look to, lot to look forward to. Uh, I think this might so be far. their strongest season, maybe even their best season. Like, I was going through the episode as I always do before one of our recordings, and just so many things came out. Like, I went, like, Oh man, I love this part. I love this part. Oh, we, we finally get like Frazier's baby, and we're introduced yeah. to Robin Colcord. And we, we get introduced to a character that isn't a character called Anton Chrysler, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Um, poor Eddie LeBeck. Uh, Spoiler alert. Carla's, yeah. one of Carla's husbands kicks the bucket in a freak Zamboni accident. And just yeah. <laughs> so much strong comedy, so much strong topics in this uh, in this new season. Where does it rank for you? For like, because in se- season seven, when we ended it, Sam gets a gun pulled on him again. And, um. and Woody and Kelly finally connect and meet. Also, we end season seven on a weird note where Rebecca's getting sexually harassed, which doesn't seem to be any different. But for some reason, this is actually it's more severe, yet still played for more laughs. It, it was a weird ending. It was a weird ending to uh, it was a, still a good season. But uh, thoughts, please. Yeah, season seven was a weird Weird one, but we, what we thought in the season seven review, and I'll stand by it, it was probably the first season where it was truly an ensemble show because they weren't trying to play the Rebecca and Sam story. They mm-hmm. were just like, we'll put it on the back burner for now. So as a result, it gave uh, the characters the chance to have equal standing throughout the season, uh, mm-hmm. I think. So far, I, I think I agree with your assessment that season eight is definitely uh in the top three seasons for sure um okay. yeah what are I the other two se- i think season four stood up re- stood up very well mm, yes season four is very good i'd want to say season nine is probably up there as well season 10 and 11 season 10 and 11 they didn't get watered down in the same way that a lot of sim- sitcoms when they go on long enough they run out of stories they, that didn't happen uh, to the same extent, but they started wrapping up storylines. So they had, you know, obviously the crane uh, divorce uh, happening, and it became partly wrapping up. But season eleven will, and no doubt we'll talk about it when we get to that point. Season eleven was when it started feeling it started feeling a bit soap opera. <laughs> <laughs> I disagree with you there. I feel like. I'm going to have to review season 10 again, but that that's going to come down the road here. I feel like season 11, everybody knew this is the last season of Cheers. So it is just kind of leaning into this is the last, last of everything. And they do a lot of callbacks and they do just a lot of, remember this joke? And, and do you remember this <laughs> storyline? You know, it's, it's, I mean, none of it's bad, but it's, it's, it's no. not the strongest of season. It's just kind of like, yeah, we're just kind of going through the motions and just coasting through here. And y- you guys are going to enjoy it anyways. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Season eight, we, we talked about it on, if not a few microdoses ago, maybe it was the, uh, no, it was a few microdoses ago. Um, season eight has my favorite joke, my favoritest joke within Cheers. Man walks into a bar. Walks up to the bar and uh, he's like, "Hey, can I get you a beer or whatever?" He's like, "Hey, man, I have not been in this in this bar in twenty <laughs> years." He's like, "Oh, wow!" Right. He was like, "You see those stairs going up to Melville?" Well, they went the other direction. 
and uh, you see all this, all the tiling. It didn't look like this, and 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 that that wood paneling back there, that was something completely different. He's like, what, what? Which panel? The the panel behind Norm. <laughs> but, but I haven't been oh. here in twenty years. Like this, I was so delighted to see that come up on the radar. I was like, yes, this this is the superior season of uh, all cheer seasons. I at least in my humble opinion. It has some strong hitters early, early doors uh, for, well, we've we've recorded the first half of the season um, okay. and looking through it, yeah, it's, yeah, there's definitely not one of the ones that we've caught, recorded so far. Uh, I, th- I would be able to say is uh, below the average of, of of what we have recorded, I think they they all they're all strong episodes for their own right. Yeah, yeah, they're yeah. like just they kept swinging for the fences to use a baseball term here. Like, yep. and, and not only do we still have this strong comedy, but we actually have like some interesting character developments. Like Sam Malone, huge pussy hound, but all of a sudden, like maybe he, <laughs> maybe his character is just maturing or whatever. But like he sees. Rebecca actually as a friend and not a conquest at one point and like you know he he actually has opportunity to to make with her and he's just like ah geez like I I feel conflicted about and I don't want to ruin our friendship and like you know I don't care about our professional relationship but like you know like if this goes south and it always does like I'd feel like the shit and you know I don't want you getting hurt by this rich guy but oh it looks now like I'm jealous and lot, lots of interesting conflict going on with Sam alone this year yeah yeah no it is and I think I think you're right that uh, with the introduction of of Robin Robin Colcord, it it had a dynamic that Cheers really hadn't had before, which is impressive for a show in its eighth season. In mm-hmm. that, although there was a rival for Sam's love interest, which was done with Frasier back with back with Diane, Robin is in almost every episode. <laughs> at least for the first half of season eight, and he's already a more developed character than Frasier was for the first half of season three. Mm-hmm. And I think that's interesting. Yeah. What are, what is the consensus on Robin Colcore? Like he's to 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 this untrained American's eyes, you know, like he's rich, he's educated, he, he's a little bit posh isn't the right word but he's he's definitely in a class of his own and for some reason he's just hanging out in this bar this boston bar slum and also like we'll we'll find out later like he likes taking chicks down by the railroad tracks to just some little greasy spoon and that's 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 his place and it's like where does this character go what why why is this a thing yeah we've uh what's what's the how did troy describe him wasn't slimy uh, but certainly, certainly Slime a word which was, good. yeah, it's, he, he's similar to Evan Drake in that he has this sort of charisma and, and, and charm, uh, but mm-hmm. he's such an, uh, opportunist and, and, and <laughs> a capitalistic mm-hmm. swindler that, <laughs> you know, is very much just concerned about him and his brand, um, which mm. is interesting, um, and I think I think Roger Reese, uh, the actor who played him, said um, it was originally supposed to be a British version of Trump, but I feel like I've made it classier. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's a great that's a great quote. Um, and and Trump's name gets brought up like in the in the first episode of season eight, you know, and uh, so does Turner. Yeah. Like she's like, I read the book by Trump, and I, I'm I'm always watching CNN. But, you know, <laughs> some comment like that. Rebecca's got a lot of conflict this year too, and I don't know if it's for the best. There are times, a lot of time, she is just mopey and whiny, and there is jealousy seething through her. And obviously, she's materialistic, but we've always known that about her. But then there are times where like she's confident and self assured. And there, she has a slutty past, you know. But then there's times <laughs> like she she comes off as too much of a prude, and I don't even necessarily know she's trying to be something different. But there's an awkwardness about her that, for some reason, is highlighted in her 30s as opposed to like you know, like when when we introduced her 
uh, a few seasons ago, like her and Carla talk about, like, you know, they call me backseat Betty for a reason, and I'll let you know for another twenty dollars. <laughs> and you're like, wow, you know, like. <laughs> but but in this one, she's like, ah, I I haven't seen a man in years. <laughs> you know, I mean. <laughs> What what is the crew's thought on that? Has that come up yet? Is it been noticed? Um, thoughts? We definitely notice it, and it's something which isn't unique to this season. And we think it's because she's trying to present herself as professional, and mm-hmm. have that be the reason why uh, why she's known and and what her reputation is. So I think she's trying to reinvent herself in, in some ways, but can't can't run from all of her past, no matter how hard she tries. What are you looking forward to sharing with your audience in season eight? We've only got a couple episodes out right now. You said you got half the season already done, whether you recorded it or not. What can fans of Where Nobody Knows Your Name, now available on Spotify, all major streaming platforms, and anchor.fm slash where WNKYN, what can you look forward to? In season eight, it's got one of my favorite episodes, and I think a lot of people's oh. favorites, which is What is Cliff Clavin? And it's one we'll record uh, in a week or two. But it's the Jeopardy episode, uh, and it's oh. uh, it's earned a legacy of itself. Just even. Even when you watch Jeopardy episodes now, even though Alex Trebek is no longer on it, if people don't know the answer, they go, <laughs> you know, who is Cliff Clavin? Or who are three <laughs> people who've never been in my kitchen? <laughs> That's a such a clever answer, and it's a shame they didn't leave. Well, we'll give you we'll give you twenty bucks for that answer, Cliff. Like, yeah, no one those three people have definitely not been in your kitchen. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, yeah. when he put that answer, I was like, he's not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> He's not wrong. He was not wrong. Yeah. I again I literally just watched that the other night and I was just like, that was this season, wasn't it? That was season eight. Damn. Like it just cements the fact that like season eight might have been a dynamo. I think a thing you're gonna see in season nine, and it's you know, that's that's a ways away, but we have the same problem in season nine that we kind of have in season two. And I don't want to like mm dwell anymore on that but i think you know where i'm going with that so um yeah yeah trebek trebek is pretty great in that episode too he's like i just came in to have a drink and then oh, i saw the mailman and i freaked out like oh my god <laughs> and i do like when they had guest uh stars on cheers playing themselves um one of my favorites is is dick cavett when it's when diane's trying to write a book and dick cavett is on it um Mm-hmm. <laughs> and Diane's going up on one, and she goes, "Look at me! Uh, I bet you feel, uh, you know, terrible st- sitting in this desert of banality." And he goes, "Oh, I wouldn't call it a desert." And she goes, "No." And he goes, "No, a desert would be an easier place to get a drink." <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's just how strong the comedy is, man. Like, and you deliver that fucking so good, dude. Do you do any acting, James Marshall? I have. Uh, in the past, I've oh. been in various uh, musicals and pantomimes, which are a ridiculous <laughs> British form of theatre, which are hey. essentially Christmas Christmas musical, but they take fairy tales and make them a farce, basically. So it's a lot of physical humour, as well as I was in an 80-minute improvised play, which so scriptless, no script. Oh, wow. um, uh, 10 cast members, including myself, and 80 minutes, 8 0. So that was okay. that was pretty fun. Had a, a, oh, had a 80 minutes, night. yeah, 10 eight minutes zero. short of an hour and a half, yeah, exactly. Yeah, wow. So, like, so something mm. maybe it's Zoom, maybe it's just my ears, maybe it's your accent, but it sounded like 18 <laughs> minutes. And at first, I was like, Well, there's 10 minutes, like, eh. you guys are just leaning on it, like, you know, I, yeah, <laughs> I, I'd be terrified too, but you got the other nine there, but 80, yeah. holy shit, yeah. So, yeah, what can you tell me about that? Like, is that a group you are or were a part of? Like, how long uh, it ago was, was uh, this? is it on it was, YouTube? I uh, don't think it's on YouTube, but it was a group I was part of uh, at at college or university. Um, okay, whereas in improvised theater uh, society, so you know, an improv troupe, basically. Sure, sure. Um, 
But one of the things we did, which I kind of, I think we kind of set as a challenge for ourselves, was to do a, a full length play. Because it was scripted, we didn't know what the runtime would be. We just went, show up. It will be less than two hours. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, you know, which, you know, I think the trope of come see info for two hours, I, th- I think it's fair that not a lot of people showed up. Enough, you know, but uh, uh, not a lot. I'd say 20, 30 people. Um, okay. But yeah, we, we won an award from it, from the university, oh. because it was just, yeah. Um, because it was, you know, best, I think it was best long play or something. And I think people just went, these guys didn't have a script and, and nailed this. <laughs> Good job. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. I've uh, yeah, only done improv that. once. And it was one of those things where, like, I just thought I was, like, supervising some get. As I may or may not have mentioned, or at least to you, um, it's definitely come up on the show. I used to be a pro wrestling promoter. And we had a guest thing with an improv troupe because one of our referees was in this group. And um, one of the guys couldn't make it. So they needed an extra body. And I was like, well, I got my lucha mask in my pocket. By the way, that was a thing. I used to have to carry a lucha mask in my pocket. I I can't really get into (laughs) that. but I did. I did. It was, it's a weird time, but I was like, all right, I guess I'm doing this. So just again, with like 10 minutes to spare, like I, I just threw on the mask. Me and this guy, like, when it, the whole thing is supposed to, the first half was supposed to end with a wrestling match. By the way, not a trained wrestler, but you know, <laughs> this guy is. So he'll, he'll walk me through it and we're going to do the most basic of stuff. And he's like, and this is the part where I'm going to body slam. He's like, yeah, you're not going to body slam me. You better figure something else <laughs> out here, Tonto, because we ain't doing that. But once we're in the improv, man, like, one, it's scary. And two, you just, you just kind of just got to go with it and you got to have the courage to yeah. go with it. And everything is yes and, yes and, yes and. There that is a, on YouTube. Was... I'm not giving anybody the link, but it's out there. You can see <laughs> there. There was one guy in this group who was just fantastic. He was this he was this Finnish guy, uh, as in from okay. Finland. And he played multiple characters, but he, really quick-witted. Because, um, you know, A Fish Called Wanda, the film, the I John do. Cleese film. Great movie. Our, our our improvised play was essentially the same genre as a fish called Wanda, like this crime okay. comedy. Um, right. And at one point, I walk in, I walk into uh, walk into the scene, and this this uh, guy, this this other guy in the in the cast, he was standing there holding his hand out as though he had a, a glass in his hand. Um, mm. And I went, uh, "Oh, what's that you're drinking?" He went, "Oh, it's very expensive whiskey." You know, I go, oh, "Can I have some?" And he went, "No, it's very expensive." <laughs> you're not supposed to say no but that is still funny just the supreme quick writtenness of that i was trying to me trying to keep a straight face just nodding somewhere solemnly back at him like mm, mm, yeah yeah how, how uh, do you keep from not laughing at most of these moments man because i i definitely had a hard time not laughing again also we had maybe an audience of like 15 people you know, one five. So like yeah. I, I get where he's like, oh yeah, this we're gonna embarrass ourselves in front of almost nobody. <laughs> it's just it's just yeah. I don't know what the tips are for keeping a keeping a straight face. I think it helps um if the if the other person and because he because he's finished, you know, just an incredibly dry sense of okay. humor, you know. Um mm-hmm. But it helps if they aren't laughing also, because as soon as one person breaks, <laughs> it just catches on and everyone's gone. Um, mm-hmm. So, yeah, it's uh, it's about finding the steady person in the group and just keeping your eyes on them. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That makes sense. That um, makes sense. Um, <laughs> season 8, what else, what else do we want to focus on for Season 8 that the audience should expect, should, should anticipate, may, may not even remember? Uh, it's when uh, Freddie Crane is born, um, yeah. which, which you know has a long, long-standing story because it, it goes on into Defrasio, obviously. Um, mm-hmm. So yeah, uh, and that means likely will be featured in the uh, in the reboot next year. So this is an interesting time to to see the origins of that character. Um, we see 
And I think she only appears in a couple of episodes this season, but she's fantastic in both. We see uh, Doris, Norm's receptionist. Mm. Who's just <laughs> uh, the modern salt girl, <laughs> as Frasier calls her. <laughs> Goodness, he's going to fire the Morton salt girl. Yeah, it was a, it, that was a, ah, Jesus Christ, we, I keep saying it, but it, it keeps being proved correct, like, just so much fantastic comedy timing on that, like, it's just, maybe, maybe it has something to do with the editing, like, I would love to have had the opportunity to see a live Cheers taping, I had the opportunity to see a Big Bang yeah. Theory episode a few years ago, and I was like, I really don't care, no, no thank you. <laughs> it's... It's yeah, no big bang theory. It's um, it's an odd one because pe- I've seen videos where people, and I think it's more of a of a of a criticism of the writing than, um, mm. the, you know, the the demographics. But people have posted videos from the big bang theory where they've edited out the laughter. And oh, I've seen like, that. Where where are there awkward pauses? I was like, well, because they're waiting for the people in the audience to finish. But also. If you're noticing that there's a pause and you're, as an individual, not laughing, then it says more about the writing. Where you could, where was you could watch Cheers or Frasier without laughter and still laugh because of the quality of the writing. Yeah. I've seen those videos of the Big Bang Theory where they've stripped the uh, laugh track out, but I've also seen companion pieces of Frasier with the laugh track cut ah. off. And sure enough, they're just they're just paused there. Like Frasier says something. Then Niles responds. Then there's a laugh <laughs> that has been cut out, but Fraser's just looking at Niles with a smirk, and then he has a reply. And it's like, and then there's another pause because there's supposed to be laughter, and then they go on with the scene. And it's it's really weird to look at, but yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, there's a there's a term I've heard to which describe the big rank, and I do think it applies to Fraser. In some circumstances, in others, in and the really good episodes of Frasier, I don't think it applies to because they don't do this. But there's a mm-hmm. term which someone used to describe the dialogue in the Big Bang th- Theory, which was apropos of nothing, which means that you can put any pop culture reference in and the joke mm-hmm. still functions in exactly the same way. Because okay. the thing which they're talking about isn't the joke. The joke is that they are referencing something. And in Frasier, they sometimes do that. They reference an opera. The specific opera doesn't matter. It's the fact that mm-hmm. it is an opera. Um, and as I say, I think I think that's why uh, when you see those clips where you're just like, is there a joke there? You just mentioned a thing. But mm-hmm. in other episodes of Frasier, because they're more slapstick, more farcical, more uh, snarky as opposed to culturally specific, uh, then that uh, transcends <laughs> that specific referential barrier i it, it's great that you bring that up so most of their pop culture references are all like dc comic stuff and it's a warner brothers tv show so they they get to do yeah. all that stuff there that stuff it just slides right by me like i i know it's there it doesn't affect me i'm just like of course they're doing that this is the motif of the show when i say the big bang theory is one of the smartest comedies it, it, they're literally making jokes about like quasars and black holes and all sorts of <laughs> uh other scientific shit that i just can't wrap my brain around but i'm just like yeah i for some reason this dummy actually understood that joke and it's funny but this is also me just wandering past like i've never sat down and watched a full episode like it's always me just absorbing everything mm. through osmosis and just like walking through the living room because everyone else in the house loves the big bang theory um mm. that's that's where I'm going with that. One show which does physics jokes really well, though does it more mm. in, in sight gags or more than uh, dialogue, is Futurama, where every so often there's yep. like a sign in the background where it's a maths or physics joke. Okay. Uh, and it's because they, they've hired people who used to be physicists and, you know, had doctorates in physics mm-hmm. and now, are now comedy writers, and they've just put them in. Not that the audience will watch and be like, ha, ha. Pythagoras. No, the audience doesn't care. And it's, <laughs> you see it for half a second, but it's the fact that you know it's that little attention to detail in a sci-fi show is a uh, uh, is something I I like. Not things I look out for, but every so often go. I see what you're doing there. <laughs> that's a, that's a I, science thing. 
thanks to the Cartoon Network, I've seen all of the Fox series. Um, I tried to watch the Comedy Central reboot, and I was like, you guys are just phoning this shit in. This is like, I, I don't give a shit about Baby Bender. In fact, the whole concept doesn't make sense at that point. But yeah, it's they, Matt Groening went above and beyond the call of duty to like you know again put those jokes in the background but you have to be looking in the background and i'm usually not doing that i'm usually just watching the show in front of me uh it's it's very rare where i'll catch something like like what we talked about on your show uh, a few months ago where i was like yeah so and so was putting the putting the ring on a on a uh, back his wedding ring back on like that's a that's a really weird choice he made you know I, I rarely pick that stuff up and i have to have seen it or be looking for it Let's take a little break from Cheers just for a second here, man. You you like movies? I do like movies. Yes. Hmm. Much we so. uh, it, It's Halloween. It's October. It's spooky movie season. And um, we just had the third iteration of the Danny McBride Halloween trilogy, because I don't know how to explain it any better. There's It's four movies in this yeah. series, <laughs> but the, the first one came out in the 70s and blah, 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 blah. Anyway, I... Um, I did not see the second one. I really liked the first one in 2018. Uh, and it only needed to be that one. But then like, we're going to make two more. And I was like, go fuck yourself. So I didn't see the <laughs> second one. But then I had I had to see a movie last week. I had to see a movie to review that I ultimately did not review. And that would be Halloween Ends. And I don't feel mm-hmm. like I needed to see the previous movie to catch up uh, or on anything. Having said that, I was surprised at how much I liked it until it became a Halloween movie in the final 10 to 15 minutes. James, did you see Halloween ends? I did. Um, Much like you, I hadn't, I'd saw Halloween 2018 and thought, okay, if this is what you're doing for a reboot, good job. And then I was like, I I guess I'll watch Halloween kills because there's this new Halloween. I'm going to watch Halloween kills. And I went, all right, I'm I'm caught up now. (laughs) But I agree. I, I agree with you. Everything you need to know about Halloween Kills is explained in the first five or ten minutes of mm-hmm. Halloween ends after the prologue, because there is a prologue of sorts. But once it gets into the look, title, you go, ah, right, fine. <laughs> Just yeah. Uh, with a convenient narration by Jamie Lee Curtis. Just going, Oh, uh, this is what you missed. Thanks, Jamie. Thanks. Um, yeah. That's all we need. So yeah. last year, obviously, we're still suffering with the plight of covid so some folks can't go to a movie theater some movie theaters just aren't open etc cetera, etc cetera. so with halloween kills they did release it in theaters but they also released it uh, out here in america on the peacock app the very same day and mm-hmm. i still haven't given a shit to see it um but they did the same thing again this year i imagine that's a contract thing all the theaters in mm-hmm. the united states are open now but I still know most folks watched it on the app. How did you see it? Did you see it in the theater, a, a cinema? Or did you did you watch it at home? And the- I watched Halloween Ends at the cinema, uh, and it finished okay, cool. about a, about about an hour ago is when it finished. So this wow. is a fresh review. Yeah. <laughs> what did you think of Halloween Ends? Was it good? Was it bad? Was it something else? Like break it down. It, uh, this was something it, it was okay. I definitely preferred mm-hmm. Halloween twenty eighteen. Um, okay. I I agree with you that they were definitely trying something new and it didn't become a Halloween movie until the final act. It felt more uh, so, sort of an elements of Lost Highway, the David Lynch okay. film, in ways I don't claim to fully understand. But I will go, ah, this... this teenage character is, or younger mid-20s he's 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 kind of suspicious any he? he's uh he's up to no good this one <laughs> i don't know it's this i mean there's a lot of contradictions in this movie like so again i i super enjoyed it until the final 10 15 minutes where i was like oh no it's just a halloween movie but like as we're going through the motions i was like this is this is interesting where are you going with it at one point, you know, Laurie Strode hooks up this kid Corey with his with her granddaughter, but then it's like, "Well, I don't like you dating my granddaughter," and it's like, "But bitch, you introduced us. I, what's your yeah. problem?" All of a sudden, <laughs> at one point, and to be fair, she doesn't know what the consequences was or the 
the yeah, yeah the events that led up to it but she's like i saw the evil in his eyes and i was like he's no good for you and i was like bitch he just got thrown off a bridge he just got thrown off a bridge <laughs> a bridge he just he was got traumatized off a <laughs> okay he, he he might be a little concussed he might be a little angry about that like, like a bridge he got thrown off a bridge like, you don't need to know that but still like he might be upset about that i lo- we're we're getting into spoilers on this one kids i like the fact that at one point like he just jacks michael myers for his mask in the sewer he's like i'm going to take your mask <laughs> ah, ah. it's my mask now struggle involved but still like i was like oh this is the halloween we need to see like, and then and then he just kind of offs it's, himself, and that's like unexpected, but at the same time, it's like, what? What, what did we just watch? <laughs> it's it's something which surprised me. I haven't seen many of the Halloween franchise movies. I saw, I've seen Dang. the original a few times. I've seen okay. it's tri- this trilogy, but in between, no. And when they went, oh, Halloween twenty eighteen, you only need to have seen Halloween seventy eight. Went, oh, then I won't bother with the rest of them. Fine, <laughs> uh, I'll crack on. But if, and I assume this is a new thing that, that they were doing, it surprises me that it took them 44 years to have essentially a copycat killer. Right. Yeah. Right. I mean, Friday the 13th did that with part five. That's, um, yeah. I don't know how well versed you are in the Friday the 13th, but like Jason I, officially I died the... as a man yeah. dies in part four. And then in part five, there's just a mm-hmm. copycat killer. But then in part six, he comes back to life, and now yeah. he's officially a zombie. And that's that's the Jason everybody mm-hmm. knows actually from going forward. Yeah, I I knew two things about Friday the Thirteenth. I know I knew who the killers were in part okay. one and two, and I know of uh, Jason X. Where <laughs> Jason in space? <laughs> Great goddamn movie, FYI. Those who aren't paying attention, yeah. like Jason in space. I, was uh, I I just remember the poster for it. I went, I think. Is this what I think it is? <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> exactly what I thought it was. I watched Jason X one night on a streaming service that had a little chat room access or whatever. And me and another me and another person entirely were making full on references to aliens. Uh James Cameron's aliens. <laughs> and it I would only pop up on my YouTube feed just a few days ago. But like, yeah, the guys who originally wrote Jason X wanted to be Jason versus James Cameron's aliens. And then the script got chopped up just enough that it, it turned out to be what it was. They weren't happy. I was thrilled. Mm-hmm. But it, it, it's still like, okay, that makes all the sense in the world now. Like they just they just tried to copy aliens. That makes total sense. So I I, I think I remember that because I, mean, I think there was discussion uh, around that time about them doing Predator versus Aliens versus Jason. That'd have been fun too. I've never heard about Predator vs. Aliens and Jason, but there's there was so when Freddy vs. Jason came out, like Alien vs. Predator wasn't far behind it, but because all this had happened, like, you know, there yeah. there was Freddy vs. Jason versus Ash. And Jason vs. Freddy versus <laughs> Hellraiser. And like they every, everybody lost their mind with fan content all of a sudden. And that's fine. But it um it was what it was and it is what it is. <laughs> James, what did you think overall of Halloween ends? Like what what is your official rating if you have one for it? Six out of ten, I think. I think Six that's about right. All right. Yeah. I, but because as a, I definitely preferred Halloween twenty eighteen. Uh, and I thought that one was quite good. Not Hmm. It's difficult to say. I was going to compare it to the 78 one, but it's a mm-hmm. very different treatment for mm-hmm. both of those films. Uh, stylistically, obviously, due to there being 40 years between them. But yeah, they, they, they do them very differently. Yeah, there were interesting choices for Halloween ends, and I'm not sure I uh, <laughs> agreed with with all of them because of reasons like like you said <laughs> <laughs> like 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 oh i don't i don't trust i don't trust this guy he seems he seems menacing well, well yeah he's he's also seen he's also stabbed and and <laughs> been thrown up a bridge and his glasses are missing so he can't see shit so 
you know, <laughs> maybe he's just <laughs> maybe he's just squinting at you. <laughs> maybe that's all right. he's doing. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is me. That's the sound of me squinting, kids. He's he's not giving you evil eyes. He just can't see. <laughs> he just can't see shit. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Great point. I'm I'm giving it a four out of five, which is much higher than a six out of ten. But like I I was in. You know, like it didn't have to be a Halloween movie. It could have been a whole thing entirely different. And then all of a sudden, like, oh, we gotta put Michael Myers back in this thing. We promised Laurie Strode versus Michael Myers. <laughs> Um, but the, it, so, it, I got a fever, and the only prescri- prescription is more macho. <laughs> like I dug <laughs> Halloween twenty eighteen, as, as we already discussed. But when when they said we got two more now in the works, I was like, um, oh, you don't have a script for that though. And it was obviously yeah. apparent that they did not have a script for either of those, so they just made up whatever they could. And yeah, I guess it's fine. I guess I don't know. Um. The, the main criticism I have of the other two in the trilogy, other than Halloween 2018, is mm-hmm. that the core premise would work equally as well if it wasn't about Michael Myers, but just someone. The fact that uh, yeah, in, Halloween, uh, in Halloween Kills, the main premise is the town find out about the murders in Halloween 2018 and try to hunt down Michael Myers. And as a result, there's a sort of mass hysteria where they're going after anyone who, anyone they don't like, basically. Um, so essentially, there's another escapee from a mental asylum who isn't as dangerous, but is uh, agoraphobic and things, and they're suspicious of him, so go after him. That's an interesting premise. It has nothing to do with Michael Myers. Um <laughs> Uh, and s- similar thing with the third one, where it's a copycat killer, and Michael Myers could have just been a name drop, which is what you said that for the first two thirds, well, for most of the movie, uh, it had almost nothing to do with Michael Myers. I keep seeing people refer to like there's this transference of power when Michael Myers has Corey in the sewer, and I was like, oh. Or- Maybe just let him live, and that guy just went crazy. I don't know. I, I don't know about this whole transference of power thing, it's, but I do know that this 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 hobo is now living in a sewer, and he's recovered from gunshot wounds and and whatever mm-hmm. else like happened that one night. And yeah, like, why he's still strong enough to pick up an eighty five pound woman and then pin her to the wall with a knife that's clearly not long enough to pin her to the wall. But we'll, we'll, we'll get over that. You know? <laughs> I did question the physics there. I, mean, I, I don't think that's how that worked. <laughs> it looked great in the 70s when they did it the first time, but in 2022, <laughs> like, I'm, I'm a little skeptical. Like, it's okay. Grabbing a big old ka- katana, just there you go. That, that will do. A katana yeah. would have made more sense. Again, yeah. he's just using just the regular knife in the kitchen. Just like, <laughs> there you go, little blonde woman. Now you're stuck to the painting. Uh, the, the interesting what you say about the transference of power because it's something which has been either a contradiction or an ambiguity throughout the whole Halloween franchise whether Michael Myers is supernatural uh, or whether he's just resilient and in Halloween Kills they went oh, no, the director went yeah, he's just a just tough boy he's, he's just resilient not, not the supernatural but in Halloween yeah. Ends, they very much go, no, no, he's, he's the manifestation of evil, and that's what makes him as powerful as he is. In and- Halloween 2018, in Halloween Kills, <laughs> in Halloween Ends, this man is still over the age of 65, okay? Yeah. <laughs> I'm 44, and I injure myself getting out of bed. This guy's been living in a sewer after being <laughs> shot and stabbed multiple times and is still able to just, like, Lift someone up. No, <laughs> it's not happening. It's you gotta just excuse a lot of stuff. <laughs> yeah. Just let it go. Which, which is and, which is which is work. fine. It, if if they win, oh, you know, he is a supernatural entity. I'm like, yep, yeah, fine. Yeah. If that's what you're going with, I'll accept it. But they go, no, no, no. He's just uh, just strong. Yeah, he's it's a, grounded he's and gritty <laughs> and realistic, James. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, man. I, we've had a great time here. Is there, um, and I appreciate your review of Halloween. Well, I'll just final question on Halloween. What made you see it today? Be we're, we're recording this on a Monday. It's been out mm-hmm. for two weeks. For me, was this a special day for you, or uh, you, you had the day off? It's nice. five dollars cheaper. <laughs> Uh, it's a well. It's been out a similar amount of time, but there was someone from okay. work who wanted to see it, uh, and I'm seeing I think three other Halloween films this week. Uh, oh, so I was shit. like, I was like, all right, I, I I don't know how long it's going to be in cinemas for, and I'd like to see it, I guess, before Halloween. So I was like, I'll I'll just go then. Uh, but also in, I assume they've got something soon in the US in. The UK, some cinemas do like a subscription, so you pay a certain amount per month, and you can see mm. an unlimited amount of films. So I just I saw there was a screening, uh, which allowed me to go and see it and come back in time to record this one. Yeah, watch watch that one. There we go. Easy days. Nice. What uh, yeah. which subscription program are you a part of? So out here we have Regal, which I am officially active with. We have AMC Theaters. Which uh, I was a part of. I, I can't get down there now. Actually, Regal's like twenty minutes walk, whereas AMC is an hour drive. But um, like, what 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 program are you a part of? I'm a part of Odeon Limitless. Uh, okay. So we have a cinema here called Odeon. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, so we used to have Odeon out here, and something happened where I think they merged with uh, Sayufi, and that became mm-hmm. something else entirely um it may be just regal now jesus i don't even know but yeah um okay yeah i'm, I'm familiar with odeon what what mm-hmm. is their prices like it's it's a monthly subscription i guess yeah monthly subscription 15 pounds 99 per month so you watch nice. watch two films uh and you yeah you, you've already paid your way yeah there you go there you go Easy. yeah i know um so we used to have the movie pass out here yeah and they're trying to do a 2.0 version of it maybe we'll participate in that later but we declined on the beta but um Mm. then there was a another another competing uh company called cinemia i believe and they weren't as good they were definitely a little more Mm. expensive but it was also just like oh my god like it so I had a problem with Cinemia where I tried to get a ticket for a thing, but because mm. it was three hours after my subscription ended, it was a month to month thing. I couldn't order anything. I was like, Hey man, I'm trying to go like see Rampage with Dwayne Johnson. Let me, <laughs> let me go see Rampage. And like it is three hours <laughs> based on London time that you, you can't see Rampage at this moment. And it's like, huh? Oh. What? Because because I'm in the wrong time zone, you're not gonna let me see Rampage. And they're like, that's right. And I'm like, fuck you. And then I quit my subscription. <laughs> and they were more than happy to let me quit my subscription. But it, oh. weird weird setup. Weird setup. Anyways, James, I think we need to bring this to a close here. Is there anything the fans of where nobody knows your name needs to be looking forward to as far as Cheers goes? Getting back to Cheers. Uh, getting back to Cheers, uh, as I say, we got we're working through season eight, and we will be. I'll say that again. I said that word weird, weirdly, uh, and we will be airing our two hundredth episode of our Ooh. podcast uh, at the end of this year. Uh, yeah, late December. Um, okay. You know, and that includes the bonus episodes we've done on on Patreon, uh, as well as season nice. reviews. So that's going to be, yeah, it's going to be an exciting. Sight and day for us. We're we're planning something special for that. So stay tuned. Right. Yeah. You guys are gonna need to subscribe to where nobody knows your name, cheers or W N K Y N Cheers on Twitter or on Facebook. W N K Y N Cheers Podcast. And again, Spotify, Anchor, all the major platforms that you're accustomed to. And you're gonna hear more about that two hundredth episode there. Um, James, is there anything I'm missing? Any plugs? Um, uh, social medias I'm missing, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. If you do want mm. to listen to those bonus episodes on Patreon, it's Patreon slash WNKYN. Cheers. There you go. How much is the Patreon? We've got different subscription levels, but if you 
pay $3 a month, you get our monthly newsletter, which has uh, behind the scenes facts from our podcast. We answer trivia mail, as well mm. as uh, things we've managed to uh, scoop about Cheers and Frasier uh, and news related to the cast and crew and their upcoming projects. Uh, cool. Using just, yeah, using, uh, well, I was going to say journalistic rigor. Often it's us going, we've caught a rumor here. Let's do some digging to see how true it is. And that's that's it. But for those bonus episodes, it is $10 uh, a month. And that also uh, gets a monthly shout out on our social media platforms, as well as your name being uh, called out in each of our weekly episodes as a sign of gratitude. Mm -hmm. It is fun to just hear your name repeated on your favorite podcast. I don't know why, but it is. And um, yeah, yeah, if you like hearing your name on your favorite podcast, you should do that. I do a thing around here. You guys have already, you're already listening to the microdose, but uh, we do the waffle box. Me in front of the family, Mike Fish, every Wednesday. Or we try to make it every Wednesday. Sorry, guys. Work gets in the way. Life gets in the way. We talk about everything and nothing all at the same time. It's the waffle box. It's the best part of Wednesdays. And we're sorry that we can't get to you every Wednesday. But when we do, we, we give you the best. Otherwise, for James Marshall, I've been Kush Hayes. You've been you. Micro dose, 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 yeah, micro dose. From the Bosnet family. Show up. It will be less than two hours.